Yeah, it's something like um, it's yeah, it's it's the fact that you you exist continuously over time. You have a sense of yourself, right? Psychological connections between one moment from one moment. To okay, so what about killing a one-year-old? I think one-year-olds probably do have that. Okay, what about I, killing a one-month-old? Yeah, I, I think infanticide is permissible. Oh, okay, great. Okay, so that's the reductio. Yeah, uh, just just wide universal infanticide would be justified in this in the in all these hypotheticals. Well, painless infanticide, right? They still have an interest in not suffering. Oh, okay. Pain. Well, well, wait a well, minute. I just don't see the symmetry. If right we're going to say painless infant, wait a minute. If we're going to say painless infanticide, that's going to open up a can of problems for you too. Well, okay. Well, I what about that, painless? Wait, wait, I think that the physician should minimize fetal pain. That's. Do you think that's what's done? They don't. That's not what's done, by the way. Well, I think that they should. All right. And we're talking about my view. But okay. even but even they... if that would make abortions more difficult. Okay, I understand. It's but I, I, you sh but I would make the okay. So two things. So number one, I would say in principle that would still be hor horrific uh, to take one month olds and just painlessly kill them all. That would be a reductive. I would take just take that to be a more hilarious reductive than saying in principle yes, right. if, if needed to do it, yes, kill yes, stop the stop the physicians from performing the abortion. Okay, well, you say you say it's a reductio. You say okay, well. Um, it can't be permissible to kill the infant, so abortion has to be wrong. No, I, what I'm saying, no, what I'm, wait, 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 no, that's a mischaracterization. I'm saying, if I'm looking at these two reductios, reductio A says, okay, I'm going to be in a position where I'm going to say, okay, in, princi in principle, it's okay to stop the, to, in, for self-defense acting on the fetus's behalf. Reductio B is, okay, I'm going to be in a position where I'm going to say, well, it's okay to have an infanticide position. I take the infanticide position to be a lot more ridiculous and a lot more LMAO than the defend, <laughs> defend something on behalf, of, on, on behalf of something defenseless. Just, t just uh, intervene when something defenseless is... Uh, yeah. Yeah, two two yeah. things, I have two things. So first of all, I think if you were to examine your infanticide intuition, you would see that that was just a peculiarity of the Western culture. I could say the same thing to about your culture, just, your, uh, your intuition. No, 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 not for my moral system. You can, no, just well, to, I could say it about you, not in your moral system. I could say it about your intuition about the, about the, the abortion clinic. I can say that. No, I don't think about that. Well, I don't you think admitted it was your intuition. Wait, I don't think that it, the same empirical case would hold that that is a peculiarity of the Western culture. Many, many cultures have thought that infanticide is permissible. I mean, Rome, oh, yeah, but I just, then I just I would take that as tangential. I just wouldn't care. Like, I, I don't see how that matters. Well, wait a moment. Earlier, you were saying that I sh we should examine our intuitions. And I'm saying, yeah, I'm, I'm examining. I, yeah, no, I can definitely examine my intuition. I'm examining my intuitions. And I think that, based and uh, you know, and with everything that holds up in terms of all my preferences of what I care about. I think one is hilariously more of a reductio and hilariously more of an LMAO than the other one. That's all. Okay, and I think that that is a peculiarity of the Western culture, influenced by Christianity, and it's probably being influenced by the cuteness of infants as well. I think that okay. would just... Now you say, now just let me finish my point. Now you say, okay, infanticide, that's the reductio. So it can't be right that... The reason that abortion is permissible is because of the lack of person. Now, I say that I think abortion is permissible, and the reason for that is that they, the fetuses are not persons, and then I think, okay, well, in fact, that then applies to infants as well, right? So we're just, you just have a modus ponens, I have a modus tollens. No, I would just, I, I just take it as a, I just take it as a reductio. I mean, you do have a position, you have a, you have a position, I have a position, and I just, if I am in a public arena, I think I would be able, I think more people would be comfortable with my reductio than, quote-unquote, reductio than your reductio, than the infanticide reductio. If I can get, if I can get someone who's defending the pro-choice position in an infanticide reductio, I am okay, I, I, I am okay with my odds of being in a, in principle, intervene in self-defense in this, in the, in, in, hy in hypotheticals. I'm okay with that. I think I'm okay with my odds. I'm getting people on my side when I can when I can scale up to a mass infanticide reductio. I, I'm a, I think I think okay. I'll take my well, odds on that. Well, I can I can scale up to the mass. No, I know you can scale up to the mass. Yes, but that would just be mass intervening then. Like that. Yeah, I'm okay with that too. I'll, I'll take my odds. 
And I think if people would have examined that infanticide intuition, they would think something like, okay, well, maybe this is just a peculiarity of the Western culture here. And I think if people were to examine it, even if they they do think it's a peculiarity of the Western culture, they'd still be on my side. Okay, well, then they're just not examining their intuition. (laughs) No, I think they examine their intuition and say, like, oh, well, this is something I actually really care about, irrespective irrespective of where it came from. Maybe it did come from there. Guess what? I still care about that. Well, you t- well, you said that we should examine our intuitions, and well, I that doesn't mean. Well, well, when I say examine your intuitions, I, I don't necessarily mean that. Well, if it stems from the X Y Z, that means it's it's wrong. If it stems from like uh, that's not what I mean when I say examine. My, it doesn't mean it's intuition. wrong. It just means it's unjustified or unjustified. Like, well, yeah, our intuitions are gonna ball bottom out of something that's unjustified. Yeah, you need an argument for that. But yeah, that's uh, well, that's well, no, I, well, okay. Let me free phrase. I don't see an argu- I don't see a case to be made for our intuition not bottoming out in something that's unjust. Right. You just flip a coin to decide your views, right? Uh, no no. That's that's just wrong. No, that's just wrong. <laughs> you know that's not true. And and the and the, the laughing is is really weird because it's like why would you why what's funny about that? Like it's yeah, I don't get it. All right, buddy. Well, you, you one like man. It, it, I think this is a this is a case where one man's modus ponens is another man's modus tollens. I find the pro life view to be crazy. I, don't think I find your wrong. view to be insane. Like, I yeah, no. I, look, I'll, I'll be honest. Like, I think I think your view is not just insane, but horrifically insane. Like, it's it's as insane as you can. It, it's it's. I I would prefer the carnist position than the pro choice position. <laughs> like, I'm I'm serious. Like, I think I think I would rather. I, I would prefer someone. Yeah, no, I, I, no, I don't get it. I don't think we have much more to say. I mean, I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll use a clear. Okay, good. All right, just well, try not to kill the. Just, I, I think, I think. Wait, I just, I'll just end with this. Um, you know how I had like the the natalist position. Yeah. I think we should. I'll make an exception for my natalist position for you and stuff. I definitely don't think you should have kids. Well, I don't want them anyway. <laughs> exactly. I don't think it's good. And, and I think it is good. Don't kill the in, and don't kill the other ones either. And I would say, and I, and I would just say, don't start going down this process of plotting to kill a physician, all right? Because you might I, think, I won't. I won't. Well, maybe Obviously. the externalities wouldn't actually outweigh the the good that would be done here, so maybe I will do it. Right obviously, now, I won't. And look, and obviously, and, and look, obviously, um... Look, in, in, if we're talking about, um, look, yeah, in, in print, look, I'm being honest, in principle, yeah, I mean, of course, it would be insane not to intervene on behalf of, of the child. If someone was, let me ask you this, like, if there was a physician killing a one-month-old, everyone would say it is okay to intervene on behalf of the one-month-old. I think there are many bioethicists who would disagree with that. Oh, okay, I mean, look. I, I there think, are many cultures. Wait, many wait, cultures wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Let's just get it this clear. Let's get this clear. So there is a physician, and the physician is going to kill a one-month-old baby. Okay. That's what the physician decided to do. They're being paid to kill the one-month-old baby. They're going to give it an anesthetic. So this is They're going to make it euthanasia. nice and painless. Yeah, painless euthanasia, painlessly killing a one-month-old baby. Okay. Is it, would it be morally acceptable to intervene in self-defense on behalf of the one-month-old baby? No, that's no different to abortion, and many bioethicists would be okay, on my great. side. I, so I, I would be very comfortable. I would be very, very comfortable. Um, yeah, I, I would just be very, very comfortable with that position in any debate against a pro-choice person. I would just, like, I have them exactly where I want them. Well, I feel like I've got you where I want you to. <laughs> All right, I guess yeah, we'll, I'm t- fine, t- we'll tell, tell, the t- tell the tale when the audience thinks which one they're more comfortable with. All right, well, that, no. But I, I think the pro-choice probably is more popular overall. Oh no, I I know the pro-choice is currently more popular. But if they can ex- if they can explore the the extensions of those views and what they end up leading with, what my views end up leading with, and what those views, views end up leading with, I think they would be in horror to be pro of have a pro-choice position. Well, if that's what well, they might called. they might or they Even, might say, well, you know, since pro-choice is true, it's the case that this implication is also true. They might, or they might say, say well, maybe it's not true. Maybe it's not true. Like, yeah, well, we, I mean, okay. I'm, I think that, you know, that a, a lot of bioethicists just are going to agree with me here. I don't think that my position is all that. 
I, don't, I definitely don't think you don't it's think it's all cost. okay. Wait, wait, wait. You don't you don't think it's all that bad to have like a one month old that's being killed by a by a okay. So one month old's being killed by a physician, and you don't think it's all that bad to say like, oh no, like I'm not just going to let that happen. I'm I'm going to say like it is it's unethical to intervene on behalf of that. Like I I don't, I don't know. I don't view that as different to an abortion. Yeah, I understand you don't view it as different than abortion, and maybe that's why abortion would, is kind of crazy. Well, maybe it's why killing the uh, the infant is kind of permissible. <laughs> sure, yeah, just like, yeah, maybe killing infants is... Okay, what if, like, um, what what do you take on your... Do you think... Well, let's scale it up. Where exactly do you think this begins, this person who... Oh, I don't know exactly. Okay, we're roughly... Like what? What are the qualities that make a? Some I, I haven't looked into. I haven't looked into the, the science of that. I don't know. Okay, let's say. I just I just want to know what it means to be a person, so I can I can explore. Well, this there are many different views of what it means to be a person, right? Okay, let's take. I, mean, I gave one view. So, what, what your view is what again? Yeah, it's psychological connectedness. Okay, so let's say there were disconnectedness. There, there was this. There was yeah. Uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I used to have this word. <laughs> I remember we were talking about um, another topic and I would use this word. Um, okay, let's say it wasn't fully connected. Let's say there were breakpoints in, in the psychology. So let's say in the, in the temporal line, if you were to have like a theory of time lined out, let's say there that it was like not completely connected. Let's say, let's say there was just breakpoints. Um, is it is it okay to now just kill the people? Um, on that I don't know if they'd still be a person. Yeah. So, so now if they wouldn't, well, just to be clear, so they have they have psychological con con um, continuity, but there are some points where it's discontinuous. Well, how is it discontinued? Sure. So, for example, we can say that. So, for example, let's say someone's in a coma or someone is, has is having a dreamless sleep. Oh, I think uh, I think it's still connected in that situation. It's just okay. in a dispositional state. What? Do you, okay, so hold on. What do we mean? What do you mean when you say a dispositional state? Well, it's not like I mean, if you go to sleep with a goal to do something, right? And then you go to sleep, and then you wake up, and you still have that goal. It's not as though the goal was destroyed and then magically. Well, all right, let's say it was. Like let's say it was. Yeah, I don't know if that makes any sense. I think that's kind of incorrect. Yeah, let's just say let's yeah let's just say whatever the goal is, whatever that represents. Let's say it was taken out of the picture. But well, that wouldn't be sleep. Yeah, let's oh, call it whatever you want. Call it shmeek. I don't, don't know what that sleep. is. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what. Okay, that so is. let's yeah let's say let's say someone let's say someone's coming. in sleep. Let's say someone is in, in someone's. In, I mean, look. Let's say someone just takes someone and injects propofol into them. They're unbeknownst. Like someone's walking around and they just have propofol injected into them and everything goes out. Yeah, if they're unconscious, yeah. I still think it exists. They're still a person. Yeah, it's, well, not well, what, when, it's not as though what's when I continuous sleep, that I'm makes destroyed. them a person. No, but what's continuous that makes them a person? That's psychology. They don't have to be conscious for it to be continuous. It's in a dispositional state. And by dispositional state, you just mean the, the physical order of state or things? Or do you think there's like something non natural there that's like still there? I, I, I mean, I, what do you mean? Well, I guess it could be either one. Okay, I don't, I don't so let's, I mean, on the physical one, let's say, I mean, let's say, let's say we just stipulated that that, that that arrangement would just jumble up randomly and it would just revert back to whatever it was after the sleep ended. So that afterwards, the person would just, you wouldn't know the difference. The person would just come back and would just do all the same things, but just that arrangement would just be jumbled that physical arrangement, or during the time which, which they were unconscious? Like, is it now okay to stab them in the throat? Yeah, I think that's still causal connection. No, wait. <laughs> wait a minute. Because when they, when they became unconscious, they were, they were, it, was, it was continuous, right? And then it jumbled up, and that was a causal process. And then it rearranged. I mean, that's a causal process that's still continuous. Okay, well, with, if the definition of continuity is that loose, that it could include anything causal. Yeah, it means a causal connection. Okay, so, and, okay, so if there's any causal connection to any point of, uh, of, other, state, of other consciousness, then fine. Then, the, but then the problem with that ends up, you know where this is going to go. <laughs> the problem with that is that when I uh, ejaculate, 
<laughs> and I have the sperm. But, so what happens is the me, there are molecules about me that, and I'm conscious. And then I have causal connections with my sperm. And then my sperm is going to have a causal connection that's going to become conscious in the future. So that's going to have some kind of causal connection. And if your definition of is that broad, that will in just include causal connections, then you would have, you're, now you're, you're in a sperm rights valuation position. Because it's a connected from my consciousness to my offspring's consciousness, if your definition yeah, is that, that Yeah, those are two different consciousness. Those aren't the same consciousness. With, with a connection going between them. Well, how do you know they're two different consciousness? Well, you're not the same person as your child, are you? I don't know. Do you know that? I think so. I mean, it would be kind of weird to say that parents, that parents' children were the same as their children. Okay, so your let's so a your view would be, be in two so places your view once. so so your view would be okay. Well, let me ask you this. Let's say let's say I would be that person. Let's say it just happened to be that. Let's say it just happened to be hypothetically that it would be the same consciousness. Let's say I would just I, I would disintegrate and that sperm would end up becoming me again. You're now you're still in a position. Now you would be in a position of sperm rights in this hypothetical. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I mean, I guess it depends on whether I think that that causal that kind of causes. OK, sounds uh, like we're gerrymandering now and stuff. <laughs> well, I, mean, I don't know a lot about the the. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, like, like, that's what I would say. Like, so at that point, if you're going to, if you're going to define it like that and you're going to broaden, if you're going to broaden the discontinuity, so look, if you're making, if you're going to narrow your definition of the continuity to make it more specific, the reductio you would be in is you would be in killing people while they're in a dream of sleep, killing people while they're in coma. And if you're going to broaden it, if you're going to broaden it so wide as to include all causal connections, then the problem is you're going to be in a reductio of sperm rights. And I'm I just gonna... the, I don't know if the sp I mean it's not just sperm's rights, right? It's that it's that you have disintegrated, and that it's if I kill the sperm, you won't appear again. That's right. Right. I mean that looks like right. that looks like murder. Yeah. I don't know if that's actually. A, I don't. I don't know if that's that bad of a reductio. Okay. Well, look. If you wanna, if you wanna have, you can maintain the broad def uh, definition if you wanna bite the bullet on that hypothetical, and you say, oh yeah, well if that really would happen, then yeah, like all this, every sperm is sacred. Um, it's not that every sp okay, well, every it, yeah. sperm it, given is that situation, I mean, it would only be one. How many sperm are needed to reconstitute? Every sperm is needed in your neighborhood. See, <laughs> if it was every only, sperm is safe. You're not, you're not answering. All right, what's if the it question? Was only one sperm, yeah, if it was only one sperm that was necessary to reconstitute you. Okay, so that's actually not part. actually, by the way. And I don't. I can just do this in a hypothetical, but actually, this isn't in the real world. It's actually not just one sperm that's needed to reconstitute. And based on all the data we know, it actually it, there are actually numerous sperm that are required just for that one sperm to actually get to the egg and fertilize the egg. So actually, every every when I say every sperm is sacred, that actually does really carry meaning because it's it, there's also the more we learn about this biology, we're actually knowing that like some sperm actually can help the other sperm get there. Um, it's not, it's not just this idea like, Oh, we just need one sperm for us. Like, yeah. in a Petri dish. Sure. But like in, in biology, that's not really how it works. Or I could just do a hypothetical in which like all the sperm really are needed, but okay. actually well, in the real world. Yeah. I mean, this is scientifically you, interesting, but yeah. I don't know if it's not relevant. Yeah. Really. But in, but, but you what? I don't think this is relevant. No, no, it's relevant because like it's, when you know no of course it's relevant you said every when no that's ridiculous to say every sperm is sacred that wouldn't be my view like actually i'm saying it would be your view even in like the real world like it would be closer to your view than you would think well, it wouldn't be in the real world it would be in some sci-fi scenario where you disintegrate oh yes yes yeah, yeah yeah sure sure but that aspect of that aspect would be in the real world like yeah it's it is really required i wouldn't have okay. i'm saying i wouldn't have to pull out All the right, wand I, 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 I accept i accept that so yeah, I yeah. actually don't think that. I mean, if I if I disintegrate, right, and then the only way that I'm going to come back again in a day or something and live out the rest of my life is through sperm, and then you destroy the sperm, and then I, I never exist again. I mean, I kind of just does look, just look like you killed me, right? Like I'm I'm gone. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, if that's and the so the only yeah, so the so I'm just I'm just not what I'm not understanding is. 
okay. I mean, like, sure. So if you want to, if you want to say that, okay, well, my pro-choice position leads me into, you know, I'm okay with that because, but I, it just leads me into this sperm rights position in these hypotheticals. Then sure. I just don't also don't understand why it needs to be the same person. That's the other, the other, that's the other question I would push back on. Like, why does it need to be the same person? Like if there's, if there is a continue, if there's a causal connection between one consciousness to another, why does it need to be the same personhood? What, it, it, doesn't it still look like you're going, the only way this other individual will appear from one conscious to another is just to, like, let's say you were going to disintegrate, for example. Let's say you're going to disintegrate and then another person would appear. Like another consciousness, a conscious being would appear. Would it, um, and it would be done through the sperm. Let's say it wasn't you anymore. It was just, now it's someone else. And the only person way they would get there is just through that sperm. So now is it okay to destroy the sperm? Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Like, is it, I mean, I, I don't understand the question, really. This person is a separate person, right? They're different yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, no, so yeah no, I'm, I'm, everything is the same. It's just instead of you reappearing, it's just like you're already, you're gone now. You're, you're, you're okay, done. You're yeah, I'm gone. Yeah. But now instead of you appearing from the sperm, another another person will. Another consciousness. That's the and only thing that's changed that, about the is hypothetical. That wrong? Is it wrong to kill, to kill the sperm now? Yeah, is it wrong to kill the sperm now? No, I don't think so, because they never were a person in that case. There never was any continuity which continued through the sperm causally. Um, they become a person when the whatever the sci-fi stuff reconstitutes them. Or it doesn't reconstitute okay. them. So, so your view is that it has to be, they have to at one point be a person. I think so, yeah. In order for it to be, in order for it to be deontologically wrong to like, to murder them, right? Now, you could still say that it would be wrong on the well-being case to prevent them from being created, right? But I, I well, no, wait, murder. wait. There's nothing about deontology that requires them to be a person for me to say that. It no, I, I, wasn't suggest, I wasn't suggesting that there was. I was just saying that on my view. Yeah, on your okay, fine. On that, on that view, sure. Well, that, but well, just to be clear, that's not your view. You're a classical utilitarian. Right? Yeah, but this the, this whole debate is just kind of uh, kind of trivial on that position. You just, it's just sure, sure. No, no. I just want to know what your view. Yeah, okay. So if someone takes, yeah. So if someone takes a deontic view on this, then they would say, okay, I value uh, personhood for all beings that have at one point reached personhood. Uh, the reductio for that is that is infanticide. And even p potentially child, just killing children, um, also, well, actually also killing mentally handicapped children. We would have to include that too. Um, so long as they are mentally handicapped to the point that they wouldn't fit your definition of personhood. Well, you know, we already kill mentally uh, mentally handicapped infants. It's called selective non-treatment. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but, but I'm talking about, like, you know, taking a curette and chopping them up to pieces. I don't know what that is. Okay, so, like, so in an abortion, for example, just to equalize the cases, a uh, majority of abortions aren't just performed medically. They're performed with the dilation and curettage. They dilate the cervix, and then they take an instrument, and they vacuum suction it. And so there's a curette that could have like a bit of a sharp instrument that can scrape uh, the fetal parts up, and then vacuum and suction up the little uh, little fetus parts. So let's say so we're not we're talking about we're not talking about you know um, non treatment. We're talking about um, you know taking an instrument and chopping the mentally handicapped child up. Yeah, I don't grant the doing allowing distinction. No, no, no. I understand. Yeah, yeah. So that, I, 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 I understand that. So what I'm saying, I, I'm not trying to get you into a doing versus like, I'm not trying to get you into my view. Like, I want to be clear. Like, my view is there is a difference, but I'm not trying to get you there. I'm just saying, like, if that's what you would be accepting. You don't have to try to make it sound like sometimes pro-choice people try to make it sound more palatable by saying these things like, oh, just non-treatment, like. No, no, like, be reasonable, like, be honest about what the majority of abortions are, and e apply it equivalently. Just you're taking, you are taking something, you're taking something that could be sentient, and you're taking an instrument, and you're chopping it up. And that's what you would be doing uh, if we were to equalize it to this case. You're taking a, it, would, it would justify taking mentally handicapped children, so long as they're mentally handicapped enough to the point where they would never have been the person according to your definition of personhood, and it is okay to chop them all up. 
So they're children. like infants? Not just infants. Children, adolescents. Adults, yeah, know, as long as they're... The, even well, adults. The age, the age is Even rather. adults. Yeah, the age yeah, is Yeah, rather. exactly. That's the point. It, it wouldn't just be... Yeah, it I, wouldn't I, just be... Infants. I don't think age is... Yeah, I don't think age is... Right, exa exactly. So what this... So the redu so the reductios for that, if if you have this view, the reductios for that uh, would be whether they're children, adults, uh, adolescents. Just it's just the mentally handicapped Holocaust that it would be that would be justified. Yeah, I guess I just don't see the big deal. I mean, many cultures okay. have thought that infanticide is permissible. Um, seems like this is just kind of a peculiarity of you know Judeo Christianity. Okay, so just so just to be clear, there's there's no big deal. There's no big deal about mass mentally handicapped Holocaust, so long as they don't. They're handicapped enough to the point where they don't fit your definition of personhood and haven't in the past. Well, and as long as there's no externalities. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, sure. That would be no different okay. to a mass abortion Holocaust. Oh, yeah. My, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. I, and right. I think that's permissible. So uh, I mean, just to be consistent, you have to say the same thing for the in, uh, for the infants or for yeah. the disabled people who are sufficiently disabled. Sure. Um, let me ask you this. Let's say someone, couple of, let's say someone became, let's say someone was a person, but then became mentally handicapped to the point where they're not a person. And they're not going to be reverting. Um, well, actually, let me think about this, how I want to phrase this. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I should just be comfortable. I mean, yeah, it's just that that's what it is, the... the uh, I guess I could. I just could never take on this view of just a mass mentally handicapped genocide, uh, and I just, I really would like to know where this, because we already know it's infanticide that would be justified, but really it's also the mentally handicapped infanticide, and then, yeah, I mean, and then we have to deal with what's a person. Like I would also want to explore that what's a person on your view, because I would want to, because then it may actually be a lot more of the handicapped people than we thought would be justified. But really, we could just scale this up. Yeah, I don't know. So I, I, I would just, I just don't get why I would want to accept something like that. It seems horrific. I don't know. I mean, I'm being honest. Like, I know you're being honest, too. So. Yeah, I mean, I just think yeah. pro-choice is right. And uh, I don't think it kind of seems really unintuitive to me to say that the mother's getting abortions of, like these evil murderers. Or that it would be permissible. Okay, to well, no, that's that's not. The... Wait, 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 wait. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying the mothers getting abortions are evil are evil murderers. Okay, obviously that, that that's a mischaracterization of what. Obviously, they're so just like I wouldn't say that you know someone going around and eating a hamburger is a you know an evil murderer. Obviously, they have they haven't explored the ethical issues about this. Like that's that's not being genuine. It's being a bit disingenuous to my view. Oh wait, eating a hamburger. I mean. The... You're you're more involved as a mother in an abortion than the guy is buying. Yeah, his yes, but it's clear that okay, but I think it's clear that in both cases the ethical issue for the overall majority of people who are participating in it have, has not been sufficiently explored. Okay, well we can just suppose that the mother is a is a philosophy student. Oh sure, yeah, right. and has and has explored all and is aware of all of my, all all the things that I'm right. saying. She and, and she, yeah, yeah. she's okay, yes, pregnant. yes. Absolutely. Yes. That's, yeah, yeah. And I then, think that's unintuitive to me. And I also think that it would be unintuitive to say that it would be permissible to run in the room with a gun and uh, blow away the physician. Do you think it's unintuitive to say that it's wrong to take uh, to take a mentally handicapped person and just chop them to pieces? <laughs> um, with the violence in there, that's affecting the intuition, right? So you yeah. need to control for yeah, I mean, well, well, wait a minute, but then why can't I control for the violence when when you're giving me the the case? Why can't I can why can't I say, well, I need to control for the oh, violence? Right. So when you you, you, know, you release a you release a gas into the room, right? We can control for the violence. I still think it's unintuitive. Okay, you release. Would you say you release a gas into the room for the mentally handicapped people? 
control for the violence and, you know. Oh, I don't see that as any different to an abortion. Oh, I think that's permissible. So I don't see, and I don't see, like, I don't see it as any difference than, than self-defense. Yeah, well, one man's yeah. modus ponens is another man's modus yeah, talent. Yeah, So, but, but just to be clear, what, and what do you, and when you say controlling for the violence, it's just that, that's, what do you mean, what do you mean by that? Are you saying that that carries the moral weight in some way, or is that, like, just shifting your intuition? No, it just, it just gives us an adverse, it just, it just makes us feel bad, right, when we think about violence. So okay, yeah. Okay, so, so just to be clear, so we can, so as long as we're using gas, we can take the mentally handicapped people and just gas them. <laughs> well, you could also use gas <laughs> to, to perform an abortion. Yeah, yeah, but it just doesn't seem intuitively wrong if you're using it in a defense, in a defense that they're going to kill someone else in the first place. That doesn't seem intuitively wrong at all. I mean, this is a this is a doctor. This is a, a physician. This guy okay. Well, no, problem. we're no, no, no. We're controlling for those externalities. Look, just like I can, you're controlling for externalities in my case. I'm controlling for externalities in your case. That's not fair. Okay, so we can just yeah. suppose that someone will replace him the next day. Yeah, someone will just as well. will just in, replace him the next day, and we're we're just we're getting rid of. We're controlling for all virtues about him. For any virtue ethicists, we're controlling for any like all these things. Like we're we're equalizing it all. Yeah. So. Yeah, so, I mean, it's okay to gas, gas the mentally handicapped. Well, I've already answered that question. Yeah, so then it just doesn't seem unintuitive to the same degree when you're gassing someone who's going to kill someone. Yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, I think there are also just philosophical arguments for thinking that personhood has this kind of value. That's another thing we'd need to explore. Um, and, you know, just with the point that, that this is a very cultural thing, cultural views on infanticide very wildly. I think if a lot of people examine that, they, you know, be less um, confident in that intuition. Uh, and given that pro-choice is already just the most popular view, I, I don't know. If people okay, really but all of these the things don't seem to make any carry weight. Like I don't see like when I'm talking about examining my intuitions, I don't know exactly what I mean. But I, here's what I know: I don't mean. I don't mean examining it in the sense that oh well. If it's from the culture, then that somehow sways it to being less accepted or not accepted. Or if it's somehow popular or not popular, or already the popular view, that somehow should make me accept or not. Like, that's not what I mean. It's not what I get at when I say examine my intuitions. Like, none of those things are things that I would look to say, like, oh, that's the salient point here. Well, things like that aren't even controversial. That's just standard. Ball. No, 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 no. I understand that it's not co controversial in terms of it being true or not. But, it, like, I'm just saying, like, that's what when I say examine my intuition, I try to get at what do I really what do I really care about is what I try to get at. What do I really what are my real core values and what I really care about? Um, and even if it is like even if I say okay, well that's just because of the way I'm like okay, but does that really change? Even if it's just a product of like because everything's a product of who you are, where you came from. That's for everyone. So. Including I mean, that very statement. Yeah, yeah, including that very statement. <laughs> yeah, so, like, what, what's the what's the statement. yeah? So, exactly. So, like, what and I could say the same thing for you. Like, what everything you've no, come I don't to is just the, the things that you've of come course. to. That's a sort of if you say that everything is a meme, that applies to what you just said. Sure, so, sure, exactly. So, that's and, why and, I don't think. Do it, that's why that I don't meme. think it's. Yeah, that's why I don't. That's why I wouldn't look when I say examine my intuitions. That's why I, that's not what I'm getting at. Okay, that's, well, that's, that's, what a, I'm, that's, that's what I'm getting at, and that's what's standard okay. to the moral method. Sure, but then why wouldn't you just do the same thing? Why wouldn't you just say, okay, I'm examining my intuitions. It turns out, like, I just got to my intuitions because of, you know, I came to this, I was fortunate enough to be in this fringe part of culture where I'm going to examine the culture. And, like, that's the reason I came to this. And maybe the culture was, maybe the culture was more, intu should be more intuitive. Like, why, why wouldn't you do the same thing? Maybe the, I, I don't understand the question, sorry. Yeah, yeah, so, like, you, when you frame it in this way where it's like, okay, well, if you just, it, it's really just because you're in this culture. Like, that's why you have this intuition. It's because of these cultural values that were just, like, imposed upon you or not imposed upon you, but they have an effect on you, et cetera, et cetera. Like, this whole contrarian thing for the culture, that is, in it itself, a part of that culture, a part of a, or a culture. Like, that is an effect that, that's been had on you, and you've had this effect to go against this culture.
and that's made you have your some of some of your views and that's influenced you and if you examine your intuition you find that that's probably why you have these views or maybe among many other factors whatever no, these things you can say I I yeah i don't know but whatever all i'm saying is whatever speculations you could bring to the table about why i have my intuitions i could just throw the same speculations back at you about why you have your intuitions yeah i don't grant that that was be that would be as plausible I mean, the looking at intuitions Why? and examining them in the way that we're doing is just standard to the me the method. Okay, I to... then I would need an empirical case then. Like, like I, I <laughs> and also even if that's true, even if it's true that it's it, it would be less plausible. I just don't see, I just I just don't see how it would be relevant. Well, I'm just assuming the moral method here that's standard. What what I is mean, the not... what is the what do you mean when you say moral method is standard? Reflective equilibrium. What does that mean? Yeah, reflective equilibrium is a method of seeking coherence between our judgments by trying to find judgments that cohere with each other and looking for the most reliable judgments, right? Because this is presupposing a methodological intuitionism. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Methodological. What do you mean when you say methodological intuitionism? I just, I just, I, I'm it's using words that I don't... using our intuitions. Okay, so, so I just want to know how it is, what I'm doing is different than what you're doing. And and tr and explain it to me. Just really try to dumb it down for me. Just explain to me why. What's the symmetry breaker between what I'm doing and what you're doing? Yeah, what you were doing was you were saying, okay, what do I care about here? And then what I was doing is, is what does the moral method tell? Me? The standard method. And okay, and what is when you do when you talk about the standard method? What do you what do you mean? Yeah, we look at our judgments, our intuitions, right? And then what we do is we um, apply them, we, we try and seek them out by looking at particular cases, and then we form theories which explain a set of coherent judgments and do away with the others. And we kind of just kind of you know, gradually whittle our way down, uh, favoring, uh, moving towards like the most reliable judgments, what we think are the most reliable ones. And then what do you, what do you mean when you say reliable? When you say reliable, what do you mean? Yeah, this is presupposing intuitionism. It's presupposing methodological intuitionism. What does that What does that mean? I feel like we're going to go in a circle right now. Well, methodological intuitionism just means that you use your intuitions to seek the truth. Okay, I still am not. But then I'm. If that's the case, and we've gone down that, I don't see how what I'm doing because that's what I mean when I say like what I really care about. I'm doing. I, I feel like I'm doing the same thing as what you're doing. Like everything you've described, like taking my judgments and seeing if they form coherent things and then looking at trying to make theories about them and then trying to apply them consistently. Like, that's what I'm doing. That's what you're doing. We're coming to different conclusions, but I don't see how I'm doing it in any way that differently than what you're doing. Okay. Well, if you're not doing anything different, then what's the problem? We're doing the same thing. We no, come no. to a different result. Sure. Sure. I, I just would. Yeah. So then all I can say like, yeah, sure. No, I, I agree. Just because some, I'm not going to tell you you have an inconsistent view. Your view is consistent, but I, I think I'm a lot more comfortable using gas on someone who's going to kill another person than taking gas and just chucking it at a bunch of, or at a bunch of people. I'm okay with using gas and chucking at a bunch of people who are going to kill a bunch of people than taking gas and chucking it at a bunch of people or a bunch of, a bunch of mentally handicapped pe uh, individuals that you don't consider people. Yeah, I mean, we're kind of just saying the same thing. Yeah, you? so, um, yeah, all right. So, I mean, like, that's the reductio I would go for. It's the reductio you would go for. I think, I, I don't know, I just think my reductios would land harder. <laughs> I really do. All right, okay. Well, I don't think I have anything more to say. Don't kill the babies. Don't kill the physicians. <laughs> in principle. I, in pragmatics, I won't. In principle, in pragmatics, no, I won't. No, 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 no. You can't say... You can't say that because there will be pragmatics where you could kill a physician. There right? will you be pragmatics where you okay. Then there will be pragmatics where you can kill the baby. Yeah, that's not, that's that's abortion. And you, no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, like the one-year-old baby, the two-year-old baby, mentally handicapped. There will be pragmatics when you can kill that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and no, there's sure. also pragmatics okay. where you can kill the physician, right? I'm sure that yes. So, for example, I would yeah, I would advocate for um, yeah, I would advocate for a legal system in which would would prevent that. Absolutely, and if if it comes if push comes to shove, yeah. It's just so unintuitive for me.
I don't, I, I mean, okay. Oh, I mean, it's, 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 it's a sad. lot more, and, but it, yeah, I mean, we're just going to be saying the same thing. Like, yeah, it's un, you saying it's unintuitive. I'm just saying it's going to be unintuitive to you. At the end of the day, it's just going to be like, something like this would just be determined by uh, an audience debate and how many people I can sway and how many people you can sway. And that, that's what, what the, that's what it'll come down to. All right, well, I don't think I would do too badly. I mean, most people... I are, really uh, don't think I do too side. badly either. <laughs> Definitely. No, I think we have different intuitions on who, on, on who would sway y'all as well. I mean, there, there are many bioethicists who would go with me here. You know, Jeff McMahon, Peter Singer, Marianne Wall. I'm sure there would... I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are bioethicists who would go with me. Yep, they're wrong. I, and I just... I have... We have differing intuitions on who would sway more. We, we've already said that. Yeah, all right, so I don't, I'm not sure what else there is to say. Yeah, I'm basically done. I, the, only, the only other thing I would explore um, is, is try to hone in on what constitutes a person on your view, because then I would just say, like, prag I can pragmatically get you to accept. Um, I don't know. Maybe at any, I don't know if there would be any point you would be uncomfortable with whatever falls out of your category, but I really would want you to see just the people, just the beings that you would actually classify as beings that don't have intrinsic value, that aren't actual persons. It's not that they don't have intrinsic value, it's just that it's not, they don't have the kind of value that makes it wrong to kill them. Okay, so I would just like you to actually see, even in the real world, what type of, of beings are actually there that you would say don't have the kind of value that make it morally wrong to kill them. Well, I already know some of them. Yeah. And I don't even think... No, but I think I, I want you to... I would like you to see the extent. I, I mean, I already know the extent from my view. Like, that's already clear. I would like you to see the extent on your view, and it seems a little shrouded by shrouding or be making nebulous what a person no. is. Not making. I shouldn't use the word making nebulous, but, but the fact that it is nebulous. It seems a little bit like there's... A, some wiggle room in terms of what, to what degree, in, even in the real world, your view actually goes to in terms of saying these, these people don't have the type of, mor these individuals don't have the type of moral value that would make it wrong. To well, I guess there will be gray areas, sure. If that's what you Yeah, no, no, there would. But I, but I think that even, I think even the clear areas, if we were to really examine what it would mean to be a, a person, the clear, the clear areas as well. I think the clear areas would ex may expand, and I would I would like you to see the extent of that as well. Yeah, I don't think it would change much. I mean, okay. Just uh, one other thing that I'd say in in favor of my view here is that you know I think that people do that, uh, a lot of intuitions kind of do go with me here, like the intuition that it's not as much of a tragedy when a woman has a miscarriage as it is when a grad student dies. Okay, but that no way that doesn't go because if I actually looked at the data on on. I actually looked at the data of the rates of uh, miscarriages and sentience, and the overwhelming, overwhelming, overwhelming majority of miscarriages happen pre-sentience. Okay, we can just suppose it's sustainable. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no. It, if it, that actually, uh, that actually, they they do have that actually is a tragedy, and they and people do act that way. They don't. Is it, when is people it as have, much? they don't. They they don't. No, because it's not going to be. Look, we we value things differently depending on the the degree of sentience. Even though we do have a value for future sentience, but yes, but th that is viewed. It's clearly not viewed the same thing as, not even close to being the same thing as a, as a miscarriage. Not at all. Like when a stillbirth. Oh, they're, they're much much more devastated. Yeah, but it's just not it's just not close to when the grad student dies, right? If a grad student gets I mean, by a bus, I mean, that's... I mean, even I, I, I mean, my intuition, I, my intuition would tell me like uh, my, I, I don't, I honestly don't even know if I can if I can answer that question because I would just be using my personal experience of people I know who have experienced both, and I don't, I actually don't even know that that would be the case. So. I, I don't know. I, I need empirical work for that. Okay, well, my, I, I mean, I do have that intuition. And another one would be um, intuitions about the killing of animals. Now, I know these intuitions are not all that great because self-interest is factoring in, but it would be like a, a common judgment that it would be permissible to you know, kill a chimpanzee or a, or a pig or something. 
to use uh, some of its organs to save a few people, right? But not a lot of people would say that it would be permissible to kill a fully grown adult in order to okay, do Okay, so I, so I, I reject that. I mean, you know my view on that. Yeah, I know your view, but I just, I'm just saying that would be a common intuition. Yeah, I just think if people examined, again, yeah, I just think if people did examine that intuition, I think they would, they would look in horror at it, as I have. Okay, yeah, I'm not so sure. Yeah. I mean, we're saying the same thing again. Yeah, yeah, no, I would, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, all right, I, I, I think, I, I think it goes. So, like, if I, look, my goal, I think it would be clear, my goal in an abortion debate would be to get someone I'm debating on the pro-choice side to just say, yeah, it's okay to kill the babies. It's okay to kill infanticide as long as they, as long as I have this view. I, I really would also, the only thing I guess I would do different is just push them more on what they mean by a person and try to take away the, the nebulousness just to make it really clear, like, oh, actually, in the, like, you actually do say it's okay to kill all the, these are the people where, or these are the beings where you should actually say even in the real world it's okay to kill that's the only thing i guess i would do different but yeah i think i i, I think i don't know what better i can do to just get the reductive of like oh you can kill the one-year-old you can kill the mentally handicapped you can you can gas you can gas the handicapped people. i mean not people not according to your view but humans the mentally handicapped humans and then you would say okay well your reductio is you get to act in self-defense okay I get, yeah, all right. Yeah, all right, I don't know. Okay, I think, I think we're done. All right, well, it was good talking to you, buddy, my dude. All right, good talking to you, buddy, my dude. All right.